to part two of our Ravel uh, Queen Mary 2 Ocean Liner build. And I might just apologise up front for the noise outside. You can hear all the um, lorikeets they are outside. There seems to be a lot more around now. Um, here in Sydney, we're in a complete lockdown here. There's even a curfew. Um, you can't uh, travel anywhere more than five kilometres and you have to have a good reason to. And I think because of the streets being so quiet with traffic and less people around, the wildlife's coming out more, the birds are coming out more. So you may hear a few more uh, bird noises in the background of my videos. <laughs> anyway, so uh, here we go, let's get on to this. And that bell you just sound heard, you, the sound you just heard was my roast pork in the oven. Uh, just about done. So I'll be back in a sec while I check that. Okay, another half hour and that pork will be done. So, here we go. So, uh, if you're new to the channel uh, and this video, please subscribe below. Give us a thumbs up if you like this video as you watch it. And um, comments are always welcome. Please comment. So, in part one, I mentioned that we were going to spray the inside of the hull here which as you can see I've done and uh, this is basically just to stop the um, LED lighting which I'm going to do inside of this bleeding through because uh, the, the white is very thin in some areas so and I'm not too sure how bright my lights will be in here so just to be sure i've just done a rough uh, black interior just to darken it and what i've also done is there's some portholes along here which i will show you i've taped them up so when i take the tape off like that what happens now is that the light will bleed through the plan is and you'll be able to see uh, some faint lights in the lower portholes that will be in the bottom there it's a bit hard to I haven't got the angle right for you to see that but we'll have a look after so I've only painted this an hour ago it's dry enough to be removing this masking tape I don't like me leaving masking tape on any longer than it needs to be um, not that it matters here but, but if you're masking over your paintwork that you definitely don't want to be peeling off paint with your tape um, I find it's best to spray your paint um, let it dry for a half hour or so and then get that tape off slowly um, the tape is only there for one reason overspray and when you're not spraying anymore no reason to have the tape there is there so that's when it's time to start removing it all and of course this is all going to come off quite easily and uh, and uh, shouldn't be a problem at all Anyway, I'll get on with this. I've got the other half to do, and we'll come back and, and have a look. Back in a second. All right, so there you go. There's the interior um, darkened a bit there, as you can see. With the portholes and bits that are on, I want the light to shine through a little bit. Um, the tape taken off, so just the clear plastic still under there. Now, I don't know how much light will get through the plastic because what we've got to remember is that this is still going to be all black along the side of the ship or dark blue, German grey, not too sure of the colour yet and then of course the red lower down on the hull um, but this area of black where those windows and portholes all are um, will probably stop any light coming out anyway but we'll see. 
Okay. We shall continue on. Back shortly. Okay, welcome back. So, I uh, ended up uh, undercoating the whole side of the ship, both sides. They're all done in a white primer, as you can see. I to take the camera off because it's so big to fit this all in. But there they are. So a nice, nice layer of uh, undercoat done. And uh, all needs to be done there is uh, glue these two sides together before we put some base coats on there. Um, let me just uh, get this camera back mounted where it belongs and uh, we'll continue. Okay, that's better. So, um, so what I'm going to do here is I'll just show you the paints that I'm going to use and what we've decided to do. So the main side of the ship the dark part um, is not actually black it's sort of a a gray black it's hard to explain but anyway the closest thing I've come to um, find out is to use for it will be this now I'm going against what I normally do with my Tamiya paints and I'm going back to SMS um, paints and these are the premium German grey. You know, I had half a bottle, but I, I didn't want to run out, so I got another bottle of it. So this is what I'm going to use uh, for the side of the ship. For the lower part of the hull is going to be Insignia Red, which, let me shake this up, is going to look quite nice. There's the red there. So that's what the uh, the, bo the bottom of the ship's going to look like. And then this is back to Tamiya will be uh, a deck tan that going by reference photos of the ship itself. Um, this is for the balconies. So let me just show you here what I mean. So these here are the balconies. This is some of the balconies anyway, but this is the part that is part of the hull um, and the side of the ship. And this will go in against the wall. So if I show you the instructions, you'll see that, as you can see here, so there's the two pieces and they'll go inside and sit in there. So. In reality, you're not going to see much in here. You're going to look through these holes and see inside the balconies of those rooms. But it needs to be done. You can't skip on the detail. So what I've already done is I've done the white. So the gloss white is what I've already painted this. And it's kind of really nice gloss white. All I have to do now is use this deck tan and do all the floors of the balconies on each one which I'm going to have to do by hand with a brush. Now there's actually I counted <laughs> there's 239 balconies along here and because I've got to do both sides of the ship there'll be 478 balconies. So that's 478 I have to individually hand paint my deck tan um, so that that will take a bit of time It'll give me something to do while well can't say while I'm watching TV because I need to watch what I'm doing I don't want to get paint where it doesn't belong um, so I have to paint all those and there is more in fact there's a lot more um, I would say there could be um, four times as many when you look at the main structure of the ship as we go up higher and look at those decks um, there's a lot more <laughs> but anyway this is good practice all right so i will now make a decision on whether it's going to be to glue those hull two sides of the hull together um, or start about painting those balconies uh yeah so in a second you'll find out in several hours I'll get it done 
Okay, back shortly. Okay, hello, and I'm back again. And I've decided... Well, I'm not going to do the balconies just yet. I'm not going to glue the hull together just yet. Um, I'm just holding off on that. But what I have done is I've got the base here. And I drilled a hole in the centre. So... <laughs> That, that, that's what I've done for the last two days. Um, work's been a bit busy and yeah, it's, it's been a bit slow going, but I did drill a hole there to run power wires down for the lighting. Um, so that's a start. What I will do is undercoat this and then find a nice brown uh, to paint it as a base coat. Um, I also got my adhesive copper strips in so here they are here so these came in I'll just move that out of the way so the idea with these is uh, I'm going to run these through the hull and then all the power for the LEDs uh, and fiber optics and everything can be soldered to this so this has an adhesive backing so all I have to do is glue this down or adhere this to something which I haven't decided what yet to run through the ship um, to give you an idea so there's a view pretty much of what it's going to look like there so I need to run something right across the length of the ship down under down low in the ship because um, my LEDs will run across that my LED strips which haven't arrived yet um, and then beside that and then power will come from this so what I'll do is I'll run two strips of this I haven't decided how yet um, also along each side one will be positive one will, will be negative and then I'll run the positive and negative off the LED strip soldered onto this that's the plan soldered onto this and then any other uh, lights for instance um, these ones that I might use because my fiber optics will run off these to light up uh, areas on the deck like the swimming pool and and whatever else I'm going to light up um, these will come down and positive negative onto the strip as well and then that will eventually have a, a, a wire off the end of it positive and negative which will come down through the ship through a hole in the bottom of the ship and into my hole in the base sound like a plan i think it'll work i hope it'll work <laughs> so that's that's the idea of all of this um, so there's really nothing stopping me from um, gluing the two sides, the two sides of the hull together um, because that won't restrict me from doing any of this wiring or anything and that has to be done before I can paint them and I'm really looking forward to doing the painting of the hull and getting that all looking nice. Um, but that, that's where I'm at, that's what I'm going to do. So this stuff will get put aside for now but that's the plan for the wiring and uh, right now I will go and undercoat this and then we'll find a nice um, wood colour to, to paint that. I think a wood brown would look really nice. Okay, back, back shortly. Okay, hello, welcome back. So here's our base. Now, what I've done was I did one coat and then I, with the brown that I decided on, and then I let it dry and then I realized that there was some dust had settled down on it and um, so I had to sand it back and get the dust off which is fine now so now I'll go put the, the, the next coat on top and it should be fine I'll just have to make sure I put it where it's not going to get any dust settling on it um, yeah Now while I'm um, painting this, I thought I'd go and also undercoat, undercoat these as well. 
which are for the side thrusters um, and these are little bits um, what would you call them doorways that open and close um, and rotate underneath um, they have to be hull the color of the red hull red well the insignia red that I'm using um, so what I'll do is undercoat this. These also have to be red, but really only the inside of them have to be red. So I'll give them a coat as well. Um, because these need to be fitted um, when the hulls join together, which is before I paint the hull. So I'll give you a look at the instructions here. So as you can see here, so as we put the center pieces in for the supports and we pull the put these two together there it is there these pieces are already sitting in here so they need to be painted um, when we put that on so pretty much you know while I'm painting it I'll probably just run across that they'll get a second or third coat as the hull will um, or I might just tape them up somehow but that's that's no problem um, so that's why I need to get these painted up now before we join the hull. Okay. Now, going back to the stand here, I haven't decided how I'm going to actually get this to work because obviously I've got the hole in there to run the wire through. I've also drilled the hole in the bottom of the hull so we can get the wires down through there. But what I need to haven't decided is whether there'll be enough power in batteries to put under here to light the whole ship or whether I need to add a plug to the side where I can add a 12 volt um, power supply um, and have that run into the base which will be connected to the wiring underneath and maybe on the front here put a on off switch to turn the lights on and off. Now if I do that and I run the wires down through into here, do I want to permanently connect this to the base, this base to the hull, or do I want to be able to lift the ship off? If I want to be able to lift the ship off, then I can't have wires that's that are going to be in the way there. Um, so I haven't decided how that's going to be. There may be a way I could have the wires disconnect underneath before I want to lift the ship off. But then of course there's probably no reason why I want to take the ship off either. Um, but then, you know, there's not really, it's not really designed for, it's designed for the ship to be just sat down on here, not permanently connected. So gluing it by these supports is really not going to work. <laughs> um, I know I could add um, bolts in there, do it that way, but I think I'll just do a disconnect setup with the wires so that I can lift the ship off um, with the wires coming out from in here and then when I put the ship back down they can be re-plugged in again so we've got the power. But it's really not very often that this ship will move. Um, what's most important is where the power source is coming from and an on off switch for the lights. Um, the other thing I noticed with these is I can easily get a, um, a jack connected into there where a power supply will plug into but the angle of this base is quite steep and even though I could fit one in there this end of it's gonna it's not gonna be a it may not sit flush so I haven't decided how I'm going to run the cable in through here for the power yet um, I could just drill another hole in there but that's not going to look too neat but that is another option is just put another hole here run the power lead through it uh, and then anchor it in underneath there's a few options I need to look at and um, we'll see what happens anyway we're going to leave all that till part three of their build and we'll stop the video here and um, I'd like to thank everybody for watching and um, 
for subscribing. And those if you haven't, please subscribe and uh, click that notifications bell so you get notified of each video as it comes out. And give us a thumbs up if you like the video. Comment below. Always welcome comments below. And uh, in the next video, I'm really not too sure what we'll get done, but uh, hopefully we have something worked out with this base. Um, and we've got a lot of, as you saw, um, balconies that need painting and uh, some repetitive bits and pieces. And I'm still um, having issues getting product here. Um, there's, like I say, I need wiring, I need switches, I need uh, a power supply. And unfortunately, I can't just go out to the shop and buy it. We're in lockdown here. Nobody in Sydney and in our area can leave uh, more than five kilometers. And uh, these aren't considered essential items that I'd be going out for. The only other way is to shop online, but shopping online is a bit difficult because for instance, I want to put a button here that you just have to press to turn the lights on. Um, but unless you're in the shop looking at the button, knowing how much pressure you need to push down on that button or flick that switch without moving in the whole model when you're trying to do that, um, you just can't tell that from the picture on the website to order online. Um, and on top of that, um, the mail is pretty bad. I've actually got a uh, LED strips for inside the ship that I ordered two months ago. And they tell me that they're in the processing center, literally in the suburb I live at, and they're going to be sent to my post office box, uh, which is three kilometers from that processing office. Uh, and that was seven days ago. So they've been sitting there for seven days and just to go to my post office box has taken a week and I don't know how much longer they'll take. So um, problem is everybody's catching you know what and there's no staff. So without staff, things don't get done. So anyway, the show must go on. So thanks for watching guys and I'll see you all in part three. Okay, bye for now.